Hi, my name is Allison Iram, and I'm the Undergraduate Program Director for Spanish and Portuguese in the Department of Modern Languages and Cultures. And I just wanted to welcome you today. Uh, during a usual premiere event, we would be able to see you, meet you in person, and answer any questions you might have right there on the spot. So um, hopefully this will give you a little bit of information about what we offer in our department for incoming freshmen. And um, again, my name is Allison Iram, and you can reach me at any time if you want more information. Dr. Michael Long is the chair of our department, and of course you can contact him as well. We have uh, four main divisions in our department, and um, we've got thousands of students that we serve every semester, uh, probably 60 full-time faculty among the different 11 languages. And um, I have been at Baylor for over 20 years now, so I obviously love it. Uh, we've got a great diverse faculty, and of course the students are fantastic, so that's what uh, keeps me here at Baylor. Um, majors and minors, you can also get a secondary major in these languages. There are various options, and as undergraduate program director, I can help you pick out your classes, um, plan a degree program within Spanish and Portuguese. One of the other uh, undergraduate program directors can help you with the other languages. Um, you can do a combination. There are also area studies, so you can see lots of different options here. Um, some of you, high school seniors, you've done um, AP credit, you've done other kinds of examinations or dual credit, and those things can all apply towards your college credits if you get these scores listed here. The department does have a placement exam for most languages, and that's free, and it usually doesn't take more than about half an hour. You can go to um, the uh, IMLC, Interactive Media Language Center, and take that test again for free if you're on campus over the summer before you register for your fall classes. It's definitely a good option if you want to try and start maybe at a higher level. If you don't want to start at the very first semester, but you feel kind of uncertain since you haven't taken it in a while, that might give you a better in indication because for a lot of classes we have um, what's considered a combined first and, semester, first and second semester course. And that sort of catches you up briefly, um, on, or reviews everything that you've done sort of uh, in the first two, maybe three uh, years of high school language, and then continues on. So you kind of get that necessary polishing of your language skills before you move on to the next step. Um, there's also uh, requirements at Baylor. So let's take Spanish as an example. Most people um, who've never had a language will come in at first semester. For us, that's called 1301, and you'll take a Monday, Wednesday, Friday course, plus a 75-minute lab course on either a Tuesday or Thursday. 1302 works the same way. It continues with the same textbook uh, for Spanish. And then 2310 finishes the textbook and gets you all the way through the sequence. Um, those are usually the requirements, three semesters of a language. Um, at Baylor in the Arts and Sciences College, but um, if you do test into a higher level, obviously that will get you into more advanced classes sooner, and you'll be able to obviously do more with your language, be able to go to study abroad programs, summer, semester long, any kind of um, uh, program you're interested in, and then of course take more challenging courses, and I'll tell you a little bit about you know all the different things, not just in Spanish, that are offered in our department. Um, here you have minors, majors, the course sequence, if you want to know specifically which courses you would need to take. Obviously this is on our website, um, but you can take a quick look here if it's big enough. Sorry, again, we're working with the technology and the parameters we have right now. Um, but uh, if you ever have any questions, you can always ask me and ask one of your faculty members. Um, we'll continue on here, but basically one course, one class, is three credits. And so to equal this many hours, obviously divide by three to see what, what number of classes you would be taking. Um, these, I don't know if you can see these very well, but um, you have here the Spanish for Heritage Speakers class. It is definitely a growing program, and um, we have many students every semester who take advantage of this. 
Maybe they heard Spanish in the house and were able to speak a little bit, but they never got any formal training with accent marks, spelling, things like that. Those students are highly encouraged to go to this class because it's at the fourth semester level. And so you'll be able to, again, polish up your skills and get prepared for the upper level classes. You do have to take uh, six hours, which is two courses of a language at Baylor. So either through a Baylor program or on campus. Hopefully we'll be starting on campus again soon. I know we all miss it. I'm sure you do too. Um, so six hours, six credits, will be required on the Baylor campus. And again, if you can test into that higher level, then you'll be able to take the literature courses, linguistics, things like that, culture. Um, the other course over here is the Medical Spanish Certificate. That's something that Baylor is unique in offering, and I actually teach uh, the 2321, which again is a fourth semester course for Medical Spanish. And if you want to get a certificate, you would start off with that course, um, and then the next one would be a 3302, which is a conversation and composition course. So you're doing a little bit of writing, a little bit of in-class, um, working with your peers, working on conversational skills. And then you would take any other 3000 level class that you want. We have a long list of options. And then there's a capstone class, a senior level class, 4321 which um, is with Dr. Carol Harden, and she and I actually um, composed a book, a manual of exercises for the 2321 class together. And um, she has a much smaller class of seniors at that capstone level, and she kind of places them with sort of a mentor in the, the community at the family health clinic, and you get really hands-on practice, at least observationally, and conversationally, and it really does help put you at that next level. And on your transcript, when you graduate from Baylor, you would have that official seal that says, yes, I have a certificate in medical Spanish. Um, hopefully, this is one of the things that could be attractive to pre-med, pre-nursing, pre-dent um, students, and um, it's always been a very popular course. We're up to four sections now every semester, and that's one of my favorite ones to teach because I get very highly motivated students. They know how practical it is to learn a language. Um, career opportunities. You're probably asking, what can I do with a major or a minor in a language? There are a lot. This is just sort of off the top of my head what's available. Um, lots of government agencies are um, asking, requesting uh, applicants with language skills, any language skills, not just Arabic, Russian, Chinese, but anything, anything that puts you at an advantage over another applicant, and language is definitely one of those things, is highly encouraged. Um, of course, you can go into academia, you can teach, you can tutor, you can go international, for business purposes, you can work in mission programs abroad. You can, I mean, the list is incredible, but um, here you can have some ideas of what other students of ours, graduates, have done with their language skills. Um, outside the classroom, really there are too many to list. <laughs> we have so many professors who have kind of taken the lead getting things going. We have a BU Vision singing contest. We have Christmas on Fifth Street. We've got um, all the different language clubs. We've got a Café Social for Spanish, a Tertulia for Spanish. We've got free tutoring by the graduate students. We have a master's program in Spanish, and they offer uh, free tutoring within our department all day long, Monday through Friday. So it's a great opportunity for our students to improve their language and conversational skills. Um, there are honor societies. There are scholarships available for people who are majors and minors, strong students study abroad, all different kinds of things. Um, one of the highlights at Baylor is to have a dorm situation where you can be around other people who are interested in languages. And Baylor and Beyond has one at North Russell Hall. Um, what happens there is you live uh, usually in neighborhoods and it's by language. Um, you might have international students living there. You might have majors and other minors um, 
or maybe just people who are interested in the language, who live sort of in the same hallway in the same neighborhood together, and you have special events on a weekly, if not <laughs> daily basis there. Um, faculty members come over and share food or um, songs, all different kinds of activities that they lead. And then, of course, there are opportunities for outreach as well with your community. Um, study abroad programs. There's a picture of my group. Um, I've been going on the study abroad program every summer with um, a group that goes to Dania, Spain, which is just south of Valencia on the coast. It's a beautiful town. We've got a great connection with a Baptist church and private school there. So we all um, are able to see those friends every year that we go and reconnect with them. Um, our, our study abroad programs are not going this summer and I am very <laughs> um, sad that we're not gonna be able to offer that. I got to meet all of the applicants over the last several months and to have to write an email to them and tell them that we're not going is, ugh, it's, it's, it was not my favorite thing to do. I put it off for a few days, but um, hopefully some of them will be able to postpone and come with us again next summer. But the Dania program is just one of many. We've got them for almost every language and some of them go yearly, some of them go every other year. You've got quite a few options when it comes to summer things, hopefully starting again in 2021. Um, then there are this, the, the um, spring break, Christmas break, semester-long, and year-long programs. And I'm sure that this is not a complete list, and also the type is tiny, so you might need to go online to Bears Abroad. That's why I put that up there. Bearsabroad.baylor.edu has the gigantic list for every program at Baylor, uh, whether it's you know a few days or whether it's for a full year, whether it's our department or any other department, everything is on there and you can kind of see what would be involved, what classes you could take, what courses are available, um, how much it costs, what cities you visit, what cultural events you participate in, who are the faculty leading the programs, anything you want. And again, I'm hoping that this gets started up as soon as possible. I know that my students who have gone over the last 10 years, they're always telling about how it was an experience of a lifetime and they learned so much in a short amount of time and many of them have gone back, which is very pleasing. Um, just to kind of wrap things up, again, you can contact me on email. If I don't know the answer, I will make sure that um, I find one of my colleagues who can answer your questions and write back to you. Um, Baylor.edu slash MLC, you can see all of the courses that we offer. Um, I wrote down a list just to kind of give you an idea. Spanish for business purposes, also French, Japanese, and Chinese for business purposes. You can take theater and drama studies for French, Japanese, German, and Russian in those languages, obviously. Both the Italian and French uh, languages have classes that revolve around culture and cuisine, which have been very popular. Uh, there's a French for Health Professions that's going to be offered starting in the fall. You've got uh, Spanish for Christian Ministries. That's um, also another popular course in our division. There's media and popular culture in the Arabic speaking world, uh, French media, French art, and then Spanish professional and literary translation. Um, of course, we've also got the usual literature, culture, linguistics classes at every level for all languages. And in such a big department, there are opportunities for all students um, to have a variety of experiences. And you can do that in your classes, in the community events we hold. Um, there are some classes that go out to the local schools in Waco and help children. And so you learn a little bit of Spanish while they're learning a little bit of English. Um, and then of course, around the world through the study abroad and mission programs that Baylor offers. So again, I just, wanted to say thank you for your time and if, uh, if, if I could, it would be ideal to see you during a normal premiere event on campus. I think that's really the best way to get to know the, the feel and the, the family atmosphere that we have there. But um, again, feel free to contact me or Dr. Long for any questions and I hope you and your family stay safe and healthy. 
Uh, I know seniors, if you're graduating this year, it's probably not very likely it's going to turn out uh, exactly the way you planned. There might be some events canceled. You're probably missing friends, teammates, things like that. But um, I definitely wish you the best, and I'm sure everything will work out. Um, and have a great summer, and hope to see you in the fall. Thanks.